Mark, what can you tell us? Thank you for having me, Emily. Well, I can tell you, like you said, there is that temperature and humidity sensor in there. And it's very interesting because there's so many implications for what you can do for that sensor, right? If Apple ultimately enables it in a software update down the road, the system will be able to tell how hot it is, how cold it is, what the air quality is in the room that the HomePod Mini is in, and be able to perhaps automatically control your connected thermostat. So if it's really hot in the bedroom and you have a HomePod mini in the bedroom, the temperature or the thermostat may know to lower the temperature there. If it's really you know, hot uh, in a room, it may know to lower the temperature, very cold to raise the temperature. So lots of fun implications with that. So you know, talk to us about the, the implication and what else could be unlocked with this new feature. And is this something unusual for Apple to take this more secretive route where even users and buyers don't know that there is this possibility? It's very rare. There have been a few instances in the past, but they haven't been recent. About 13 years ago, there was an update to the iPod Touch, basically the iPhone without the phone that had Bluetooth, but the actual Bluetooth feature wasn't enabled until about a year after the device came out uh, via a software update. I can't remember any recent history where this has happened, but it's likely a reflection where the hardware for it was ready but perhaps the accompanying software and service to really enable it and take advantage of it uh, is still in the oven. Meantime, talk to us about Apple's broader strategy. Obviously, there's the device strategy, the HomePod strategy, and then there's this $3 trillion market cap target now by Citi. You know, talk to us about how this fits into the larger whole. Yeah, I mean, to me personally, I don't think it really takes, you know, a lot of math and research to call for Apple to hit 3 trillion by 2030, right? They went from 1 trillion to 2 trillion in a matter of, you know, double digit months, right? And now we have eight years, nine years until 2030. And if Apple does have hits on its hands with the VR headset, the AR glasses that it really wants to begin to replace the phone with, you know, in about four to six years from now, if they really do end up launching a car to take on Tesla by the end of the decade, there's a lot for shareholders to invest in. There's a lot of new products for consumers to buy. And there's an even larger ecosystem for Apple to lock consumers in. And they will have people continuing to spend money, whether that's on headsets, cars, uh, glasses, all sorts of stuff down the road, not to mention all the accompanying subscription services that will go with that. So I think the future is long and, and very strong for Apple. Well, speaking of a long future, let's talk about the short term. What device unveils are you expecting for later this year? Will it be the typical fall rollout for iPhones and more as always? Yeah, I think the next thing we're going to see is the launch of the new iPad Pros. Those are just weeks away. So you can expect an unveiling of some sort uh, during the month of April. So not too far to wait for that. And you can expect the new iPhones to launch during their normal release cycle around September, October, alongside new Apple Watches as well. There's also going to be a new entry-level iPad at the end of this year. There's a redesigned iPad mini in the works. But I think the really big story, and I know it's not the most interesting part of Apple, but I find it fascinating. And I know you, you use one too. You'll see lots of new MacBooks and other new Macs across this year and into next year as well new designs, new features to take advantage of that new M1 and upcoming M1X and M2 processors uh, with Apple's own technologies built in.